Brothers and sisters, this is a day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to read our daily devotional message today, written by Dr. R.J. Sim, titled, The Lord's Angels Are With You. The Lord's angels are with you. Therefore, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. That is Hebrews 1 verse 14. Angels are powerful spirits sent by God to help you and protect you on a daily basis. God has a huge number of spiritual beings for the purpose of protecting you from all evil and to minister to your needs. You may not see them, but they guard you on a daily basis. From time to time, God may open your spiritual eyes so that you can see angels. However, what is important is that they are there to protect you and minister to you 24-7. Angels are God's messages sent to minister to you. When you pray and confess God's word, they go to work on your behalf as you live, walk, and speak out your victory. They delivered you. And remember that according to Psalm 103, verse 20, God's word is what put angels into action. So, when you face difficult situations, don't cower and hide. Speak out the word of God so that his angels have something to respond to. And they certainly respond to the word of God. Then, just be patient and let them get the work done. They are there to serve you. Amen. Declaration of Faith The Lord's angels come around me and they deliver me and save me in all evil situations. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please get your Bible, your notebook, and pen, and get ready to receive the Word of God from our man of God, Pastor Ricardo. Well, praise God. Welcome to our broadcast this morning. So good to have you join us. Um, we are truly blessed to have you join us this morning. As we can just, before we go into the word of God, let us just open in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you this morning for an opportunity, Lord God, to share your precious word. Thank you, Father God, for the power that is in the word of God. Thank you this morning, O Lord God, that as we share your word, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, that your power will be made available to every person that is under the influence of this broadcast. I pray, Lord, that faith will come. I pray that hope will come. I pray that the people of God will be liberated, that the people of God, Lord God, will be built up and edified in Jesus' blessed name. I pray, Father God, that you will anoint Lord God, my vocal cords anoint my word to proclaim your word to your people this morning. I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for the power of your precious word, which liberates and sets free. And I thank you this morning for faith, which comes by hearing and hearing by the precious word of God. In your blessed name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Well, welcome once again. To our broadcast this morning i'd like to share with you from the book of ephesians and the sixth chapter i want to talk to you this morning about the whole armor of god and i want to pick up from verse number 10. Um, paul writes to the church at ephesus which is very applicable to the present day church it's very applicable to you and i in our lives this morning he says, finally, my brethren, 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What he is saying is receive strength. Be endured with strength in the Lord and rest in the power of his ability. Amen. Because very often we can have the tendency to rest in our own personal achievements. It could be your academic achievements, could be financial achievements, could be whatever achievement it is that will never be able to keep you to to keep you on solid ground and to enable you to stand up against the enemy in the evil day. Because your academic qualifications can only do so much for you. Financial achievements can only do so much for you. But it is so important that we lean not on the arms of flesh. The Bible says, cursed is the man who leans on the arm of flesh, but blessed is the man whose hope and trust is the Lord God Most High. So Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So rest in God's ability this morning. Take the words of David from the book of Psalms, 20, Psalms chapter 18 and verse 29. Take those words of David and say, by you I can run against the truth. By my God I can scale a fence. In other words, with God on your side, there is no limitations. When you have God in your life, there are no limitations. In the book of 1 Timothy 6, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, Fight the good fight of faith. This is a good fight. A good fight is a fight that it, there is no way that you can lose. It's a good fight. There's no way that you can lose. You're not disadvantaged. In fact, you have the greatest advantage ever when God is on your side. And God is your ability and God is your strength. Amen. You've got the greatest advantage. You've got the upper hand. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor. No, don't put on some of the armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Satan is crafty. But when you have the armor of God, there's no way he'll have the upper hand over you. Praise God. So you'll stand your man. You'll stand your ground. Why? Because you're standing on the ground of faith. You'll be like David when David stood before Goliath. Everybody was afraid because of all that Goliath was saying to them. And Goliath was rebuking the nation of Israel and cursing them and blaspheming. And David gets on the scene, but David stands in faith. When you stand up in faith, faith changes the atmosphere. In other words, if, if you're standing on battleground and you are meant to lose the battle, you will not lose because of faith. Faith will cause you to overcome. Faith will cause you to triumph. Praise God. Hallelujah. He says, for, the, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places that means that we know our enemy our enemy is not flesh and blood our enemy is not people we are not we don't fight people no we fight the spiritual influences the spiritual forces behind the actions of people i'm reminded of a um, man of God, Smith Wigglesworth, they say when he would pray for the sick, he'd often hit them, he'd punch them. And somebody asked him one day and asked him, Smith, but why is it that when you pray for people, you punch them? He says, listen, I'm not attacking the person. I'm addressing the spirit that's behind the sickness. I'm addressing the spirit that's behind this thing. So, hallelujah. Uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they, in, they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. So, praise God. You have the whole armor of God. That means this armor is not man-made. It is God-made. Praise God. So, you are clothing yourself. To put it another way, you are clothing yourself with God. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. We are not fighting people, flesh and blood but principalities 
and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. In 1 Corinthians 9, 26, uh, Paul writes to the church at Corinth, he says, I therefore so run, not with uncertainty, and thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. In other words, not shadow boxing. I know the enemy that I'm up against. I know what I'm what I'm pressing on towards. I'm pressing on towards the crown. Christ Jesus, he's the prize. That's what I'm pressing, pressing through in. Amen. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So the whole armor of God will cause you to withstand, will cause you to resist and oppose the devil in the evil day. Brothers and sisters, may I share something with you. There is nobody who does not have an evil day. An evil day will visit every individual. You will have your share of adversity. But praise God, you got to stand your ground, stand your man. That's what Paul says. He says, Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand, to resist, to oppose in the evil day. And after having done all to stand, the armor of God will cause you to stand. In other words, no one will be able to move you. The enemy will not be able to move you. You'll be standing your man. You'll be standing your ground. Praise God. You'll be like Paul at the end in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. So you got to hold fast to the very end. Don't be a quitter. Amen. Don't quit. You stand. I mean the very next verse, verse 14, Paul says, stand therefore. Stand therefore. Nobody fights a battle sitting down. Nobody fights a battle lying down. No, you got to stand. Stand up on the word of God. Stand on the truth of the word. He says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Girded your waist. What do you put on your waist? A belt. What is the purpose of a belt? A belt keeps your garments intact. Hallelujah. A belt keeps your garments intact. You know, I'm just thinking of a wrestling match and I'm thinking of boxing as well. You know, when you're fighting for the title, you win that belt. But when you put that belt on, you wear it with pride. You wear it, you wear it with integrity because you won it honestly. And praise God, the belt that we gird ourselves with, it has been won already through Jesus Christ. He's won the victory for you. Praise God. That's the truth that you gird around your loins, is that Christ has defeated Satan and all his cohorts. The Bible says he made a public spectacle of Satan. Hallelujah. He made an open show of them. He defeated them. And when he defeated them, praise God, you and I defeated him too. So wear that belt. Gird your waist with truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate protects the heart. Guard your heart. Hallelujah. Guard your heart. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness and, and having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Isaiah 52 verse 7. I just want to share this with you. Wow, this is powerful. Isaiah 52 verse 7. Thank God for the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation for every man who believes. Praise God. Isaiah 52 verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Good news is the gospel. Who proclaims peace. Who brings glad tidings of good things. Who proclaims salvation. Who says to Zion, your God reigns. Hallelujah. Praise God. God orders your steps. Your steps are ordered of the Lord. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. This is a powerful gospel. I have peace with God through Christ Jesus. Above all. Watch this. Above all. 
taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench not some, but all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Satan will come up against you. That is a fact. He'll come up against you. He'll bring opinions your way. He'll bring suggestions your way. He'll send words your way. He'll use whatever means possible. He'll use people to get to you. But you've got to hold up. That's why he says, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So when the wicked one comes with his fiery darts, his fiery suggestions which is meant to consume you, you'll take up the shield of faith. That means your shield is fireproof. There's nothing that the devil can send your way that the shield of faith cannot send back to hell where it comes from. Hallelujah. If he sends you notice that, listen, whatever note he sends you, you serve him notice by holding up the shield of faith and you say return to sender. It's not for this address. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Praise God. You've come to the wrong person, the wrong address. Take your message and you can go to hell. Praise God. Hallelujah. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the, all the fiery darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. David says in Psalm 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Hallelujah. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The helmet, when you put a helmet on your head, that the helmet, you know, in Paul's day, he was, he was referring to the Roman army. Now, when you look at those helmets they would wear on their head, the helmet, number one, protected the head. And then number two, the helmet made you look taller than what you were actually. So, Putting on the helmet of salvation, when you put on God, when God is your head, you are taller than what you face. When God is your head, you are taller. You become taller than the Goliath in front of you. You become taller than anything that, that, that you face. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. The helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hebrews 4, verse number 12, says this. For the Word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God. Hallelujah. Take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Friends, take note. There are five, the five weapons, the first five weapons we covered, are weapons of defense. Those are weapons of defense. Those are weapons to defend you. Hallelujah. Girding your loins, your waist with the truth. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Holding up the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And the helmet of salvation. Those are all defense. That's the armor of defense. That's to defend you from the evil one. But... The word of God, the sword of the spirit, the word of God. That is the armor and weapon of offense. It's a weapon of offense. That the word has power within itself. And the enemy understands that. That's why he'll do everything possible to keep you from the word of God. Because he knows if you would listen to anointed preaching, if you would Put yourself in a place where you can hear anointed preaching. Hear the word of God being preached under the anointing. 
If he can keep you from that, he knows he's got a better hand over you. Because the word carries within itself an anointing. The Lord says in the book of Isaiah 55, 10 to 11, He says, as the rain and snow fall to the earth and water the ground and cause it to bring forth and bud and be fruitful, so shall be the word that comes out of my mouth. It shall accomplish the purpose where to I sent it. There's a power, there is an ability within the word itself to bring to pass what it has been sent to do. This word has power. Hallelujah. If it's a word of healing, the healing is in the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the enemy will try to keep the word. He tries to strip you from the word because he knows now you only got the armor of defense. But the word of God will keep him where he belongs. It will keep him away. Praise God. It will keep him away. Amen. So the enemy will try to keep you from anointed preaching. In the book of Acts chapter number 10, verse number 44, the Bible says, While Peter was busy preaching at the house of Cornelius, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to him. The second thing the Word of God speaks about, you find in the Word of God, the Word of God speaks about anointed praise. Anointed praise. Anointed praise causes Walls to come down. It causes gates and doors that were shut to open up wide. I'm reminded of Paul and Silas. They, they remained in the word of God. That's why Paul said, I have kept the faith. I have fought this fight. I've kept the faith. Because he knows he's been there in the prison cell. And all he rested on was the word. And the word was his joy. And that's why he praised God all the more because of the word that he had. If you have a word from God today, that's my advice to you. Get up and praise God. Hallelujah. Praise him. When last did you praise him? When you praise him, the walls come tumbling down like Jericho. When you praise him, the prison doors open like Paul and Silas. Hallelujah. The other thing the word of God will reveal to you is anointed worship. Look at Moses, anointed worship. When Moses would enter the tent of meeting and he would worship God. The Bible says the cloud of God's glory, the cloud of his presence would descend upon that place, would come upon the tabernacle of meeting. Hallelujah. Amen. Moses, friends, in those days, there was no ESCOM to generate electricity. There was no ESCOM there. There were no lights there, fancy lights. There were no smoke screens to create smoke. All these things, you know, you know, it, 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 it looks nice, but it's all emotionalism. It's people trying to create an atmosphere. You, there's, no, there's no atmosphere greater than the atmosphere of the living God. Hallelujah. Moses, without Eskom, he, he had the true light of God. The fire of his glory was there. Without Eskom, without a smoke screen, he had the cloud of glory. Yet the, the smoke of his presence came in. Hallelujah. Let us not be, you know, don't go into emotionalism like the rest of the world, having nice lights and, you know, all these smoke screens and trying to create an atmosphere. It does nothing for your spirit. I'd rather have the living God. I'd ha rather have the true light. And rather have the true glory. Hallelujah. The cloud of his glory. Anointed worship. Moses had the real deal. Go for the real deal. Let me share something quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. The real deal. Go for the truth of the gospel. The gospel is a gospel of power. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Paul writes to the church at Corinth. He says, But I fear lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is, that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. It seems nice. It sounds nice. But it's not gospel. 
The gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel of power. Praise God. Hallelujah. The enemy will, will try to keep you from anointed meetings. Anointed gatherings. Where the anointing is, there's order. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 14. What Paul writes to the church at Corinth. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 26. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. You see, when anointed gatherings edify you, builds you up, hallelujah. And as you, as you hold the word of God up, as you apply yourself to the, to the reading, the study, the meditation, and the hearing of the word of God, you receive power, you receive strength, you receive supernatural ability to do the supernatural in your natural. Praise God. You may be a natural being. You may look natural on the outside, but deep on the inside of you, there's a power. There's a river that is flowing on the inside of you. It's the river of God. It's the river of life. Praise God. So go for the word of God. This is a, this is the armor of offense. Amen. The enemy always get off, gets offended when you pick up the word. The enemy always gets offended because he cannot stand in the truth. There is no truth in him. When he speaks, as Jesus says, he speaks from his own accord. He speaks from his own. He speaks lies. He's the father of lies. But praise God, when you stay in this word, you know the father of truth. You know the truth. Jesus is the truth. And he sets you free. Praise God. So hold up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. As the book of, Ju of Jude says, Building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit. Now Paul says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Everybody needs prayer. Pray for everybody. Hallelujah. And couple to your prayer. Patience. Patience. Be patient. Don't be too hasty. Hallelujah. When you pray, you say amen. When you say amen, that means so be it. So be it means it's a settled matter. God has done it. After that, you just start praising God. You just be patient and you just want. Although you see, you may see that things are getting worse. But don't go by what you see. Go by faith. Go by what you saw in your inner man with, the, with your spirit man. Go by that. Hallelujah. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Praise God. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me. You see that? And for me. So men of God, women of God also need prayer. Many times people think, okay, I need prayer. And you, and, and you neglect to pray. Do not neglect to pray for your spiritual leaders. Do not neglect to pray for your spiritual leaders. The spiritual parents, the men and women of God, we need your prayers too. I'm sharing with you this morning, I covet your prayers. Pray for me too. I covet your prayers. Pray for me too. And for me that utterance may be given to me, that I may, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Paul was in his chains in a prison cell, but he knew that he was an ambassador of the King of Kings. Hallelujah! What he was saying is, church, pray for me for boldness, that when I speak, I will not speak from my own, but it will be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It will be Jesus speaking. Hallelujah! Pray that Jesus will use me. Pray that Jesus will speak through me that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. In other words, I will not speak something that I think I must speak. I'll speak as I ought to speak. I'll speak that which the King of glory, the King of kings, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, what He wants to speak. Let Him speak through me. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I trust that you've been blessed this morning, and I trust that you receive something this morning.
Now, before we end off this morning, before I go, I want to take the opportunity to share with you, if you haven't received the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to open an invitation to you this morning to receive the Lord Jesus into your life. Hallelujah. And you can receive him by just saying this prayer of faith with me together. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, according to your word. If I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Wash me with your precious blood from all sin, iniquity, and unrighteousness. I thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I thank you for paying the price on my behalf. I thank you that right now I receive your free gift of eternal life. Right now I declare that I am a child of the living God. Satan, you have no unsettled claims concerning my life. I am a child of the living God. I have been born again by the word of God and the spirit of God. Lord Jesus, I ask you to fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. I thank you right now for this precious gift of salvation which I have received. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Well, if you pray that prayer, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. I want you to please connect yourself to a church in your area, a good Bible-based Bible-believing, faith-believing church where you can grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. And if you've prayed that prayer, the details are coming up on the screen. Write to us via email. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to bless you with a gift if you've prayed that prayer of faith this morning. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying God bless you. And just before I leave, just stretch your hands towards the screen as I release the blessing. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Lord God Almighty bless you. The Lord God Almighty keep you in the palm of His hands. The Lord God cause the glory of His presence to be upon you, upon your house, your home, upon your family, your marriage, your workplace, your business. In the name of Jesus, I declare victory in Jesus' name over your life. In the name of Jesus. I thank you now, Almighty God, that you bless your people. May they prosper. May they increase. May they flourish. In Jesus' blessed name, God's people said, Amen, Amen. Till next time, goodbye and God bless you.